welcome back so in this video we are going to be considering how we can determine the number of factor underlying our data set <clears throat> and to do analysis the number one and the most important thing here is that you will bring in you will activate the package that you need for this analysis and if it's your first time you have not yet downloaded the package to be used with this psych to download it you come to package after you click on package ensure that you are connected to internet after you click on package you can then click on install and when you click install and the interface will come up so you type the name of the package that you want to download the name of that package is psych p s y c h that's the name of the package to be used and after typing the name of the package ensure that install dependency is checked show that there's, there's a tick on it after all of this is done you can go ahead and click on install but i've installed this package before i wouldn't want to install it again so i'll click cancel now that your installation is done or you have it installed the next thing for you to do is to call psych call it so that it can become active because there are several packages that can work on R and all of them cannot work at the same time so when you call it what you are trying to do is to disable all other uh, uh, packages that are on R and make active that particular package which implies that that package at that particular point in time is, is synonymous with R as that the package is actually R that is operating so to get that done you will type library type library open a bracket and put the package you want to put inside and what package are we trying to use we are going to use psych p s y c h so you can see here is suggested so use click on the suggested one at least it's better so you then press enter after pressing enter the package is active so we can go ahead and do our analysis this is where we are supposed to type our data our analysis proper but if we have two or three lines of code to run at the same time it will be difficult to get it done on this interface so we should use a more simpler interface to write our code and run our analysis and that package you can that interface you can get it from file so to get the interface you click on file when you click on file use the several options will come up then you can see new file click on new file when you click on new file other interface will pop up and on the pop-up interface select arrow scripts which is the first the very first option you are going to see so you click on it so after clicking on the arrow script you should open a blank console up here for you so what do you do you can begin the analysis so we are interested in running parallel analysis and how can we do this so let me give us a general syntax for this parallel analysis which we can use to remember what we do at every point in time if we need it if we need parallel analysis to be done using psych so the first thing you want to do is to give your analysis a name so i'll call it name for now name name then put your less than sign and hyphen in front of it then you will type the code for the analysis which is fa.parallel by the time you type fa.parallel to make suggestion to you so you click on this one that is fa.parallel after clicking on it then the first thing that will come inside the bracket where you have the blinking where you have the blinking cursor is to type in is to indicate the data so the data we are going let's say this is data where you indicate data after indicating your data you have comma so the next thing you are going to have is the fm the factor analysis method that we are going to use so for me i'm going to use the maximum likelihood there are several type you can use but i would advise you use the maximum likelihood you can have the principal as factoring you can have the uls you can have the wls a number of them but i will be using the maximum likelihood approach so after typing the factor analysis method you type comma the next thing that will follow will now be the 
correlational analysis the correlational analysis that sh the engine value should be computed from so we are going to use it type the code for the correlation analysis you type correct c o r by the time you do that it's going to make suggestion for you so you click on the suggestion and indicate inside inverted comma what analysis what the method you want to use so you can have t e t that is to represent tetrachoric correlation and usually you use that for dichotomous data if your data is polytomous like if it's something like a rating scale where you have strongly agree and disagree and all of that you can then use polychoric or poly this poly you use you don't use the two together this place you use poly if it's rating scale and if it's a, a credit if you award partial credit to tests like conventional essay tests where free response tests so you can leave it default you don't have to indicate the query so at that point it will use the piercing correlation because that's the default method for correlational analysis for assessing engine value here so the next thing you want to do at this point you are good you can run the analysis so let's now write a code for this our current data so the name i want to give this analysis the first thing is name what name am i going to give this analysis i will give it dim i'll give it dim don't forget r is case sensitive whenever you are using r try as much as possible to either use capital letter or use small letter i prefer to use capital i'll make it dim underscore para meaning dimensional and i'm I'm doing dimensional analysis, but I'm, I'm looking at parallel analysis method. So whatever name you want to give, let it be as descriptive as possible and also as short as possible. So the next thing that I will type is this FA parallel. So I will type FA dot parallel. It's going to suggest for me. I'll click on FA dot parallel. Then the next thing that will end that will be there is what inside this bracket will be the data set. So what is the name of the data we want to analyze that we brought in that we learned how to bring onto the into the R interface? The name of the data is data underscore IRT. So you click on data, you type data. So by typing that is it will make suggestion for you. And this is a data. Beside it, you see the characteristics of the data. That way you can be sure it's the data you want to cross check before you click. So I'm going to click data that's called our routine and then i put comma after that i want to indicate the factor analysis the factor analysis method that should be done in this case i want to use the maximum likelihood so i will type ml small letter sure it's small letter after typing ml i'll hit on comma again i'll type comma again and then the correlational matrix that is needed for the analysis because the data is dichotomous i will use tetrachoric so i'll put tet after that is done my code is ready for analysis to run this code you, all you need to do is to highlight this particular line of code the particular line of code that you're interested in running and then you hit on run so if all things being equal your analysis should begin so you can see the analysis has begun so what we have here is saying that i equals to 18 and j equals to 11 that is in that pair a cell entry of 0 was replaced with 0 0.5 this is done inside the system just to ensure that the analysis is done properly this is not a cause for alarm so we should wait for the analysis to conclude so that we can determine the number of factor underlying the test all right our analysis is concluded so what we have here the output is a parallel analysis suggests that the number of factor equals to 23 and the number of components is equals to one so what we have here is for the simulated data set and literature have shown that the best method of parallel analysis is to use the resampled method and not the simulated 
The difference between the two is that the, the simulated, the, date, the system is going to make simulation of data that look like the original data, which may not actually represent the true data. But the resample is the same data, but it's just that if uh, in, the, in the entry of the data, if, for example, number student 1 gets the item correctly and student 2 does not get it, we alternate and give I just alternate the position of the response. Every data is still the same thing. What has happened is that the position of the, res the response pattern would have been alternated, changed from one position to the other. That's why it's more preferred. So we have to check the output itself so that we can see for the resample because the result presented here is for the simulated data. So how do we get this result printed out? How do we get it printed out? And if you check the plot here, you will see the result here. Like what we have here now, we ask we are the result that this data is showing for resampled data is around the two or three factors. But to be sure, we can extract the numerical value. And to get this uh, this uh, graph you click on plot after the analysis has concluded it will show you the graph it's clearly we can see one factor above the simulated and the resample factor but here we can see for resampled data set that there are about two factor of the actual data that are both the ending value of this resample data but to be sure let's cross check we have to check the output and how can we get the output this is the reason one of the reason why we gave it a name this is the name of the analysis all we need to do is to type the name of the analysis and just run and then and just run it so this is the name of the analysis the empire and then we can highlight it and run around it so after running we can see the real item parameters that have been the real engine value that have been extracted so what we are doing with parallel analysis is just to compare the engine value of the original data set and the resampled data set and the number of engine value here on the original data set are greater than the number of the engine values here on the resampled data is what we are going to count as the number of factor underlying the test so let's look at let's start counting number one item which is 23.79 is greater than 1.29 therefore factor one is a substantial factor then we go to the second one the second factor engine value cell is 0 0.73 engine value for the example is 0 0.68 with 0 0.73 is greater than 0 0.68 therefore factor two is a substantial factor when we consider factor three we can see that the engine value of the original data set is now less than the engine value of the resampled data therefore at this point we can stop there are only two engine values of the original data set that are greater than the engine value of the resampled from position three downward we'll see that the engine value of the resampled is now greater than the corresponding engine value of the raw of the actual data set the implication of this is that there are two engine values that are greater than the engine value of the simulated data set therefore we can conclude that this data has two dimension our analysis is done we might want to save this output for future use so how do we save this output to do that just type sync sync and you can see it suggested sync to you so you put in quotation mark double quotation mark and then indicates you ask the system to save a file for you inside the folder which you have created so i can call it parallel analysis output parallel underscore out underscore out will then dot tst which is the format that the file will be created in this this is the format we created in and this one is the name of the file that i want you to create 
after that is done i will type in so what do i want to put inside that file is the output of the parallel analysis so i will type the name the parallel analysis name that i've come after that is done then i close the sync with another sync i can close as a system to close the file open so by what we have done is that we have asked the system to create a file parallel analysis parallel underscore output as the name and the format should be free text format thereafter we are now telling it to save the output of the parallel analysis inside the folder then close it so we can then run all of what we have here together so we click on run so after clicking on run our output is saved so we can go to our desktop and view our output so you can go to your desktop open the folder you use for that you open for the analysis and then you can see now the output is here so this is our output we can go over this again the goal of parallel analysis is to compare engine value of original disaster with the resampled data and in that comparison every engine value of the original that is greater than the resampled is considered as the number of dimension of the line data so if we count now we can see engine value one of the original data set is greater than the corresponding engine value for the random for the resampled data engine value two number two of the original data set is greater than the engine value of the resample data but engine value three is less than engine value three of the original data set is less than the resampled data at this point we stop and we'll count the number of engine value of the original data set that are greater than their corresponding resample data and if we can't we can only have two which is number one and number two therefore we can conclude that there are the data has two dimension the implication is that this data violate the assumption of unidimensionality under the condition under which you can use the unidimensional item response theory model so if you are going to estimate this data with IRT model we'll be using the multi-dimensional item response theory so in the next video we are going to be learning how to analyze our data with item response theory model thank you so much i'll see you in the next video bye bye